Welcome to the course Algorithmic Design. On our, our My Courses, there are tutorials. Just click here. Tutorials. And uh, yeah, go down to recursion grammars. And then there are these Python files and there are zips. Uh, so there are two zips. One of them is Subdivision Rhino. So those are the, that's the package that you need for Rhino version. And I'll show you that as well. But this Subdivision 01, why does it have this name still? I don't know, but it's the first version. Uh, that's a zip that when you open it, it looks like it looks like this. So just open it locally. Here it looks like this. Um, I think all of these are still inside. Yeah. Um, so these models that we are running and processing, uh, they will be exported to OBGs, and we can actually import them in Rhino. But I will then also show you how you can just directly do everything sort of in kind of Rhino. Okay, and there, there are different libraries here, and basically there's this processing source code here, which when you open it, you need to have a processing installed. Or so again, we are not really working processing in this course, but I just want to show you. So if you go under, you know, uh, processing.org, um, so it is a integrated um, programming environment for graphical interactive applications. I think last time I showed you. The P5GS version, so that's the, uh, the, the 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 JavaScript implementation that you can run in a in a browser, and this one here um, is so-called Python mode, or so it's um, uh, it's 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 running in Python, and then it's running locally on your on your machine. When you open it, uh, when you open it, it looks like it looks like this. So it's actually rather short. Um, there's the setup here, and then there's the draw. And basically, again, we will not dwell too much on this example, um, but basically when you run it here, okay, when you run it, you basically get a subdivided shape and you can kind of zoom in. So it's a, it basically gives you a model that you can kind of, you kind of really interact with it. You can just rotate and then there's some, um, some, lights that are kind of just rendering the different sides okay i'll show you basically how you can how you can start here um let me just comment these ones out if i can remember how to comment in python i'm switching languages these days so i always forget how to comment this is one way to comment okay and uh, let's call it here let's call it uh, cube sub div, sub -div. And let's call it, uh, yeah, one. So that's the first iteration. Okay, so basically what happens here is uh, loading this image. Nothing to do. Yeah, I don't need this image. Okay. Um, so what happens is that we choose one of the primitives. So it can be either a dodecahedron or a box. Um, <clears throat> box is like a cube, give it some dimensions. And then we save the mesh, uh, the mesh of that box, and then we can basically just immediately ex ex export it, or so we can show it how it looks like. We do this in the, in the draw here, so this here we don't need to change anything, just in the setup, and this is all commented, so this will not execute, and we just export this cube subdivision one. So that's the first iteration. That should be just the box. Okay, so if I run it. I just get a box. Okay, so this is the first step. Um, yeah, very simple, just a box. Uh, and now we will apply <coughs> subdivision rules, or so we will start subdividing the sides. By the way, as I run this, this exporter already happens. So here under OBG exports, the folder here, su uh, cube subdivide one. So this is an OBG file. This you can import directly into. Rhino, for example. Okay, so now we there are two rules basically. There's the rule pyramid and rule tappered. Okay, so I'll change here the name. So we export a second object, second iteration. <coughs> we take the same mesh <coughs> and we say um, RP is rule pyramid. Okay, so there's basically only two parameters. There's the mesh that we want to subdivide, which is the same mesh from before, plant one. And for the pyramid, 
we only have extrusion, we only have the height of the sphere. Okay, so here we put 50, let's see how that looks like. And then that's the mesh that we kind of exported. It's a bit hard to see because 50 is a, it's a kind of a number that aligns very well, but I'll show you how it looks like. So I'm gonna put 150, okay? So it goes a bit out. Okay, so now on the top of every cube face, we have a pyramid on top of it. Here, that's kind of clear. Um, so just pyramid gets extruded. If the cube, if the side was 100, is it like 100? 100, then the height of this pyramid is 150. Okay, so it looks like kind of a spike. Um, you can see what happens if you go just a little bit out. So it's 10, okay, so it's the same thing, but the pyramid is just smaller. So we get kind of a smaller facet. And we can go the other way around. We can go into minus, okay? So if I write minus 50, for example, it's also extruded. Maybe 50 is like exactly in the number, maybe 25. Okay, so if you go minus 25, we get like an inverted pyramid. Also, the pyramid can be extruded forward, but it can also be extruded backwards, okay? Uh, that's it. So we can extrude in both directions. Now, you can ask, well, what happens if I extrude too much backwards, you know? Then I get self-intersection. I should actually change this. Um, just quickly change this to... Yeah. Bit annoying to make a square. Okay, something like this is better. Maybe 900 by 900. My screen will look best. Okay, so um, I will now try to extrude it in negative direction, but like a lot more. Okay, so uh, not maybe maybe minus hundred. Okay, so you see what what kind of happened here. Uh, I extruded backwards, and I got self intersection. So this small pyramid that you see here, you know, this point is actually the point from the pyramid from from the other side. Okay, so suddenly I get something more complex, but uh, yeah, I get more complex, something more complex. But it's just because I I kind of allowed self self intersections. Okay, so this is for example not 3D printable. Okay, so if I want to export this, this now I can get the OBG file. If I want to put it uh, turn into STL, this will not print uh, because the 3D printer here does not really know what the inside and what the outside is. Okay, so for 3D printable objects, I need to have a well defined inside and outside. And here for us, it kind of looks clear. Well, obviously I can see kind of what what's inside the shape, what's not. But for a computer, this is not that obvious because the mesh has, uh, the faces on the mesh have direction. Okay, so they have um, they have a normal, which points toward the kind of inside and outside. And then you start doing self-intersections. Um, like this is, for example, this surface here. I'm trying to show you with my mouse. That's the outside surface. But this pyramid here that you see, that surface is the inside surface okay so you have the combination of inside and outside surface and when you do this slicing so for 3d printing you need to slice the whole object and then the printer or the, the algorithm needs to decide where to put the material like if it fills up the cube what's the inside that it fills up and what's the outside okay and if you have this self intersection this this is then hard or it cannot really be done at least not directly and um, but there are techniques where you can basically go around the problem and actually make it uh, make make the kind of algorithm understand what's sort of inside and what's outside and then you can 3d print it and um, and yeah then you can get uh, shapes I'll just quickly google if you forgot uh, digital grotesque okay so digital grotesque here um, then you can get shapes like this Okay, so that's the algorithm is the same here. It's just a lot more iterations and a lot more variation, and so on. And then, of course, there's a lot of technical, um, technical kind of development that was put into trying to make these um, basically three D three D printable. Or is there actually an animation or a video? But maybe there's a. Okay, here, yeah, you can see the shapes.
okay but let's let's go actually back to the back to the algorithm okay so basically now you can just add these um you can add these rules on top of each other i can just take the same role and i can just add a few of them here okay so i'm now basically taking the mesh from the previous iteration and applying it applying the same rule okay so this is again a type of recursion so i um I'm just applying the same rule, but on the result from the previous iteration. So if I do this, actually, let's let's not do it that fast, maybe like this. So I will just apply the same rule just one more time. Okay, now I get this. Again, now it's it's very hard to, to see exactly what's happening, but basically, again, there is another inverted pyramid on top of every on top of every uh, pyramid from before. Actually, I just realized it. I will, because uh, I want to save this correctly. This is now iteration number two. Okay, this will now save, great. And now I'll put number three here. Add one more, hop. Um, and yeah, we can just go on. So let's do iteration four. I'm just using the same rule here, but of course you can change the parameters. Okay, we get something like this. Let's do one more time. Let's do a few more times. Five. Something like this. Uh, there's a limit, of course. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think you will not be able to get to 10. At least not on my laptop. Something like this. Seven. Now you kind of it's very easy to see that it's sort of slowly, slowly going, slowly dying. Maybe I can get to 10. Okay. Something like this. I actually don't, I'm not really a fan of this one. But, uh, but I just want to show you a few other uh, examples. So uh, let's go uh, cube subdiv. <laughs> two um let's go some other version so so let's not use this rt but let's use let's use or let's let's not use rule pyramid but uh rule rule tap uh, pyramid like tap pyramid okay so here um we start with the cube and then we define uh, we define, I can actually show you, there are a few parameters that we define, like this. Okay, so here we have the same pyramid, but now what we can do, we can start, uh, we can kind of start cutting the, the top, okay? So I set the parameter here to maybe 50, that's the shrinkage, this top, or not shrinkage, but I guess it's extension here, okay? Uh, and, and here I can also define if this last parameter is true or false. I can define if I have this last, so if this cap is kind of here or not. So if I put here, for example, true. If I run it, I will get the, um, it. It will be closed. Okay. And yeah, let's let's try a few few variations of this. So again, there's a truncated pyramid or tapered pyramid on top of every side of the cube. And now let's just apply this again multiple times. Actually just realized that yeah. okay. this hop. Uh, let's do it one more a few more times. Um, and yeah again you can of course randomize these parameters. Um, it's a very re rewarding creation process, so it's almost impossible to do it wrong. Um, usually, the later iterations work better if these parameters are, uh, these extrusion parameters are smaller. Okay, so if they're, if they're a bit smaller, uh, it just it works better because you have more and more things that become smaller and smaller. Okay, so maybe we can try to do that. Maybe this first is 20. Uh, 50, then we go to 20, then we go to 10, then we go to five or maybe two, something like that. Okay. 
and let's go to five. Okay, so we get something that is, you know, a bit more like this. And uh, uh, maybe do one more version where we delete one of these. So for example, this one is false. Maybe this one is also false. Okay, so now there are, there are kind of gaps. So some of these are just, um, they're not there anymore. So some of these, when we do the truncated pyramid, we cut off the top and then it's, then it's, then it's not there anymore. Okay. So that's the processing part, and um, I already um, took on my Rhino, and let's we'll take a break now. But I just want to show you um, uh, this code. So in processing, you have these libraries here, so they are always they're always open here. These mesh objects, uh, input output primitives, and rules. Uh, all of this is ported also in. Uh, uh into rhino so i actually ported it but it's written in python so it was rather easy to port <laughs> uh subdivision rhino and uh yeah if you kind of open any of these so for example primitives it's just a library it's the same code just rewritten a little bit so that it so that it works in rhino okay so you could run the same code but uh before we do that or or a little bit after break but now i just want to import one of these Experts. Okay, so here in the folder is subdivision one, which is the processing folder. There's the OBG exports, and here now everything that we were experimenting with now is here. Uh, so we can just try to see which ones we take. So there's the maybe the, uh, the one of these last iterations here four four. Okay, you can just this is an OBG file, so you can just take it and drag and drop it into Rhino. Open or import, maybe import. Okay, and it's kind of already here. Uh, I have to change the mode here, so I'll just put here grid, just delete all the grids. Okay, and this is now into in wireframe, so we can put it into shaded. This is how it looks like. This is a mesh, so it helps if you do some command called unweld. I'm gonna throw it and stand fine. And if you do that, you get kind of a it sort of unwells these angles, then they, they, they just look better. And then if you go to whatever rendered, you get, you know, your pieces here. Uh, okay. Let's try to import uh, some more. So um, maybe not this one, but maybe this one here. Import. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Here we can also say unweld. Okay, something like this. Let's put a few more. Huh. Unweld. Okay, so all of these you can put into Rhino. Again, the I mean, I guess this is also interactive because you can kind of rotate rotate around. But of course, this is now just this is a mesh in Rhino, so you can actually do stuff with it um maybe i just i'm not really satisfied with these examples here but maybe what does unweld do exactly like how does it make it look better uh yeah it's a kind of a bit of a just mesh thing so i don't know if you can see here you can see it's there's um i'm not 100 percent sure but there's something it's also now hard to see here with these actually maybe import like a cube right uh, it has something to do with kind of how the meshes are displayed um, i'm not to be honest an expert but you see here the cube this is a mesh of a cube you see that there's something is a bit off with um with the faces okay and again i'm not really an expert so i don't really know what's what's kind of off <laughs> um and i never really looked into it i just know that when you import it directly, you see that there's something is a little bit off with this cube. Actually, I can copy paste the cube, put it here, and look if I do now unweld. Now it looks like now it looks <laughs> properly sh shaded. Okay, so they are just um, yeah, it's the same geometry. It's just somehow shown differently. Again, I apologize for not being able to explain it better. Uh, it's just one thing that you can do to. Uh, I think it just kind of corrects a bit um, the way the normals look like, so that when it's shaded in Rhino, it just 
it just looks better. Um, okay, good to know. Of, Thank you. Yeah, because this process, of course, that we use in processing to create uh, shapes, it's it is like a very it's a very manual. I mean, it's a very kind of a manual processor. So it's just some, some code that that we wrote. Um, so um, so yeah, this kind of just makes it a little bit nicer. Okay, and then maybe just one last. Uh, just before we go, you know, you don't just to show you what else you can do. Um, you know, you you don't have to stop here. Or so this can be just this mesh can be an input for something. Okay, so I can, for example, say, well, these are nice surfaces. Okay, but I maybe want to I want to um, extract the wire. Okay, so there's a function called mesh wireframe or wire extract wireframe okay up and then it basically gives you select last it gives you the wireframe the lines of the mesh okay and then um, just check the scale so i'll check one of these uh length uh, 100 okay so maybe i can do something like so i can for example select all these i can say pipe and pipe radius maybe 10 Maybe too much. Again, pipe, maybe pipe radius one. Okay. So this is again not maybe that amazing. Hold on. Not maybe that amazing, but basically I can, you know, now I extract the wireframe and I got um, um, I got these lines, or so I got the, I just turned them into pipes. So this is actually 3D printable. Okay, so this, if you would put into a printer, this would totally work because each of these pipes is a closed shape and they intersect, but this doesn't really matter. If you know, if you free print, if you have like closed shapes that are themselves free printable and if they intersect, the union is also free printable. There might be some problems when you have shapes that intersect, then when the free printer is depositing material, it might deposit double material on the intersection. Which might cause some um, some weird things to happen, but otherwise this is you know this you can actually produce this shape out. Okay, and actually uh, just before the break, I just want to conclude with um, uh, so if you take this principle, so have this subdivision, and then turn the extract the wireframe, and then turn it into a mesh, or turn it into these pipes. Um, if you push this far enough, then you can get things that look a little bit like this. Okay, so actually it's the first example maybe. So this I will not, I cannot run it because it's uh, take a bit too too long to do, but the same algorithm, okay? So you have subdivision um, and um, and yeah, then it's just about a little bit uh, kind of adjusting the parameters, taking the nice view. And uh, this is just a, when you get the truncated pyramid, you just take kind of one, one part of that and or one part of that cube and you cut it off so this is actually cut off, or so the most of the, the geometry here um, is not shown. It's kind of behind because uh, it was just way too much, way too much geometry. And then if you put it into Photoshop or use some kind of post processing, you can get, um, you can make it even kind of look nicer, sort of glow and so on. This is one example. The other one is uh, this one here. Okay, so these are in a way self-intersecting surfaces, but. Um, and then you get the wireframe out, so you, you just focus on the lines, and then they, because they're rather thin, they tend not to intersect. I mean, they kind of bypass each other. Here you can see they intersect, but uh, but yeah, that's one. And then just show a few other examples. This one here. This is very heavy for Rhino. There's actually a better way maybe to create this if you use again blocks. I think last time uh, last tutorial I showed you how to use blocks in Rhino. Um, you should use blocks here because they're all these pipes, they're all the same. I mean, they, the geometry is the same, it's just scaled. So it makes sense in Rhino to use uh, block geometry. It will just make everything run faster. So here, the mo most of my effort went into basically optimizing this so I can uh, kind of extract the, <laughs> extract the images out. Um, the algorithm is rather simple. So the algorithm is exactly the one that you saw. I don't know how many iterations six, seven or something, and, and then you just spit it out into Rhino, and then it's kind of post-processing. Post okay, and then there's another example here, maybe. 
I'll just fence here. Same thing, it's just kind of made to glow in the dark. Okay, so these are just some, some things that you can do when, and again, it reminds a little bit of this digital grotesque project, except that there, again, they focus on surfaces, kind of closed shapes, and here I focused on, uh, on, um, on wireframes and lattices. That's a little bit kind of more aligned with the research that I'm doing also. So now we're going to have a look at this subdivision Rhino uh, folder. Uh, it's basically here. So I, of course, it's zip, so you have to unzip it. You get the kind of whole folder. By the way, don't unzip stuff that you get from people on email and so on. Um, I really hope this my courses cannot be hacked because it would be really unfortunate if somebody would replace this file and put some kind of a hacked version on it. That would be a catastrophe. Uh, so yeah, but you, well, me, you, you trust. <laughs> so so you are allowed to open the zip file for me. Okay, if you trust me. Uh, otherwise, never, never open zip files from anybody who sends it to you. So that's just a, I, I hope you know this. I mean, you're mostly younger than me. so. Uh, that, that should be clear. Okay, uh, so in this subdivision Rhino folder, um, there are really some examples here. Um, when you run the code, the, you will also get um, the object uh, file will, will come in here. Okay, but let's have a look how that looks like. So these I'll just all delete. Uh, you go again to edit Python script. I mean, actually the results will be the same too. We'll get kind of the same results as I showed you now. Um, which is a bit uh, <clears throat> a turn down or let down, but it's just ported into Rhino. So you can then do a lot more things that I'll actually show you some other things that you can then do when you have it in the Rhino workflow. Not new, but you go open and then um, this subdivision Rhino, and then you open any of the examples. I will just try to open the subdivisions one, why not? Okay, so you can see it's very short because in the processing example, there was this draw function and the draw there was a lot of code on uh, below and this draw was basically just doing the um, uh, was kind of managing this you know when the geometry is created so that you can have the rotation and the lights so so there was a lot of stuff there that was concerning um, animation but here we don't need this so yeah so this this code is actually rather short actually i will save it save as subdivisions I'll just call it something like example subdivisions. Uh, I'll just call it one. Okay. And I will actually comment out all of these. Actually, let's, yeah, let's comment out all of these. So again, in Python, you can comment stuff out with using a hash. And here I can just call it, uh, let's give it some. Nice name, maybe uh, not skeleton cube, but something like um, very, <clears throat> very imaginative name, subdivided cube. Okay, subdivided cube one. Um, okay, and I mean, you leave everything as it is here. You have to import these um, uh, classes from this node face, uh, from sorry, uh, mesh, mesh objects, the rules. Primitives, this just means in Python that you import all the functions uh, in all the flat classes, functions that are inside these modules, you just import them all in, and then you don't need to, you don't need to call the library. So you, you don't need to have the library name. Otherwise you would have, for example, right here, something like rules dot rule pyramid. But if you do it, if you do it like this, then we don't even need to do that. So that's just a bit of a different syntax. Okay, so if I run this, uh, it will, basically get the box out and it will just save it as this obg one and uh, nothing really happens okay so um or the same thing happens as before so we have the obg exports and here i can maybe uh -huh, subdivide a cube uh, let me just see here i can sort them by dates yeah okay if i so sorted by the date then here it is and if i just put it in import file here it appears. Okay, so it's just a cube. So that's not really that impressive. But um, but uh, yeah, and then you can you can go on. So there's again this uh, 
rule tapered. Actually, I'll just run a few of these. So maybe this is like this is one, this is two, three, four, like number four. If I run it. So I'll not change these parameters because um, I already got something before. I think that kind of looks maybe okay. So again, this is the shrinkage factor of the top of this truncated pyramid, and this is the extrusion distance. So uh, how far basically the height of this pyramid and then the last parameter is just um, are, are we keeping this kind of top part as a face or not or are we leaving it as a whole uh, so let's see this number four should come here you can just import it and yeah again unweld okay so uh, if it's yes you can kind of zoom in yeah, just mm, Squeeze this a little bit in. Okay, so um, yeah, this is for example what you get. And let's do a few more. So this is four, five, six, seven. And I encourage you really to play with these uh, parameters because they are, it's very easy to do. You just have to make sure that they that you don't um, have to make sure that you don't overdo it. So, um, you know, do it step by step because depending also on what computer you have, uh, you don't want to crash your computer. So if you put too many steps, what will happen is your Rhino will calculate, 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 and it might never finish. It might never kind of stop. So you might need to restart your computer or something. So um, it might take also very long, it depends on your memory. So, because, when the calculation is happening, your computer is using memory, allocating memory to store this model. And if this becomes too big, then you run out of memory. Then um, I guess normal operating systems should basically tell you out of memory, right now, you know, uh, has to crash now or has to be closed. But sometimes, of course, the whole computer crashes or closes. So that, that's a bit unfortunate. But uh, let me just think of, yeah, I can maybe show you an example now, just quickly, as you already mentioned it. Okay, let's actually leave it here. So these are just, uh, this like this Rhino version. Let me actually try to find an um, example, but I, I, again, I don't have it really prepared for you, but I'll try to find it here. Um, one of these generate lattice variants, five maybe. Okay, so again, this is an example of, uh, we're gonna have a little bit later. Let me see, connection type, yeah, I'm actually trying to animate frame. Okay. I apologize, I have more kids in the house. You might, maybe you're hearing it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to just to figure this code out because this one is supposed to and just see through the middle, leave middle, animate, draw. Okay, let's actually try to run this code. So I, I will show this at one other moment, um, but exporting variants as frames. And just how many variants do I have here? I just have to make sure that I don't run this for uh, too long. Uh, loop update maybe this is only one variant i'll just drag lines okay yeah i think it works <clears throat> uh okay animation frames okay yeah here i have to go a little bit in Okay, uh, I'll just run it a little bit and then I will explain to you what's uh, what's actually happening. Okay, so um, so this code, it's it's a little bit long just because I, um, I had, it's like a part of a loop where I'm at the same time creating these uh, shapes. Actually, there's also irregular ones here as well. Um, creating these these lattices. And then I'm actually not using the piping function. I'm using uh, multi-pipe, which is um, it's called multi-pipe. It is uh, 
a function in Rhino 7 where you can create very organically looking sort of um, seamless, seamless kind of pipe shapes or uh, pipes that sort of connect at joints very, very, very well or seamlessly. You can free a print them much, much easily. They also look nicer. And uh, here, basically, you can run this code multiple times. I also have it somewhere in the loop, I think, or one other version where this is in a loop. And then I basically get these, these, these variants out. Um, and here you can see the same functions, this rule pyramid, rule tapered. And again, I, I will show you this one other time or in the future lectures, I will try to clean it up a little bit because now currently it's, uh, it's a bit too long, but here it basically does this subdivision, creates the mesh, but deletes it and just extracts the wire, and extracts the wireframe and then does the multi pipe on it. And I was just running it a few times because I want to show you, uh, it also took a screenshot or so there's a, all of these are now kind of saved. Some are irregular, so they look kind of broken, but uh, you can also constrain this so that they're not, that they're just all regular. For example, you can set the thicknesses of these multi-pipes and so on. So these are just, this is a way that you can kind of create them in an automatic way. Um, and I can show you maybe even a better example of these ones, uh, just super quickly. Visuals, lattices, generate lattices. Okay, actually, maybe this one com compass. Okay, so I, I was already running this for some time, and then uh, you can get these variants out, or so you can kind of create many, many variants. And if you if you name them according to parameters that are used, so first you generate them in a random way. Okay, so you it's like a random sampling. So you um, all the parameters that I showed before for these uh, subdivisions, you can set them manually, but you can also put them random. Or so you can say random extrusion, um, random number of steps. Um, uh, you know, we decide if the, you know, the, the side of the truncated pyramid is going to be capped or not. So you put, you create all of these as parameters and then you just randomize them. And then you create different, different versions. Just as I showed you now, you'd get kind of different, uh, different outcomes. And then you name, so you create a screenshot and you call this screenshot, you put the parameters in the name, okay? So you don't call them, uh, you're careful how you name the files. And I can show you also here when you get these variants out, uh, you can see here, for example, uh, let's find a good one. There's actually one 1000 here. So maybe one of the thicker ones are here. So which one do we like? Maybe this one here. Okay, this one is called, you know, lattice two two. Those are two parameters that are used, symmetric, minimal, perfect, and then there's some code at the end, or just some number. Um, and so we put some parameters in the name, and then we can just sort, sort all the results according to these parameters, because we can just sort them according to the name. Okay, so we get, um, even though they're all randomly generated, we get kind of one type of lattices at the end, you know, they're kind of grouped, or so here we have so the hedrons of, higher order, so more iterations. And as you go toward the other end, we get a um, cube of um, lower iterations, you know, so lower number of sub subdivisions, okay? And then when we do that in Photoshop, we can just kind of glue them together and we get these kind of, uh, we can get this sort of a grid. And then when we do that, then, then we are kind of really, really on the roller. So we, um, we are not really generating them one by one, but we generate them as a group. We sort them according to parameters, and then we can make certain con conclusions out of them and so on. For example, here I, I don't want to bore you with this, but here I realize that some of these actually look like faces are. So I'll just try to show you. I realize that some of these start looking like these, you know, Mexican calaveras, the, 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 the skulls, the ornate skulls. I'll try to find one somewhere. Maybe this one here, ah, this one here. It looks like a <laughs> looks like a face. Okay, so you know, then that that became kind of a part of the project. Uh, then you kind of find them and just turn them into some faces and so on. You know, so you can kind of you can be very very creative how you sort of approach this approach this problem. Okay, but here there's some some random ones are created here. Okay, uh, and yeah, so basically I suggest also to use multi pipe. So I can show you here. You can just select all the lines. Um, same multi pipe. So this you have only in Rhino 7. Um, but it's very, very versatile. Pipe radius 0 0.1, maybe. 
taps on, and then this is just number of divisions. So you can experiment, see what kind of that does. And that creates uh, line, this we can play it. Okay, that creates this kind of a very smooth sort of subdivision, uh, subdivision type kind of joints. And you can actually parameter, so you can continue modeling then in Rhino uh, with these ones further. So they're quite flexible. Um, so, but I like them because it somehow just creates these joints that are just very, very nice. Um, and they're kind of closed, and this algorithm is actually rather fast. 